www. I'm Malcolm.Boyden at bbc.co.uk. This is the Facebook, there's the Twitter, loads of ways to be involved and get in touch. It's the way we like it. Makes our day. Right, what is it? Nine minutes past ten. Let's skedaddle. Let's get a move on while we can. Oh, let's consider this together, shall we? A long day at work. Hmm? Mine's only just started, but you know what I mean. Arguments with the family. Oh, bickering again on the stairs. I heard you last night. What about an unexpected bill? Money troubles. We all get stressed. Don't worry, we're all in the same boat. But you know, sometimes it's the simple things that can help you calm down. Like weeding next door's garden. Or your own. Defrosting the freezer. Tidying away the legger. We've been asking for your simple, mind you, and that's the word, your simple stress cures. Oh well, we like to sit on the deck and have a sit down there. Because the sun's always going down somewhere in the world. Yeah, so basically I go in the hot tub or um, I do gardening. Because being outside in the fresh air is a good way of uh, de-stressing your muscles. Yes, I would listen to a uh, easy to listen to music. To de-stress, I read a book at night time. Just, that sends me off to sleep and like, helps me relax and puts me off into a different world. So like all the troubles are gone and you just, you're just in the life of another person. I just take a deep breath and just play games all day <laughs> and then just fall asleep. Yeah, sometimes I like to go for a run if the weather's nice, go to the gym. Pub's always a good option as well, free beer. I normally get home and then I go for a run and I'll sit and have a nice gin and tonic. So when I get in from work, I sit and I feed the swans and I have a vodka and tonic. Today, yeah, nice run. Half an hour, 45 minutes, yeah, just sort of de-stress. Go to the gym or I'll probably cook, actually, for me, so those are the only two things for me. I like running in the weather's good, but if the weather's really bad, then I like to go on the PlayStation. That's my way to de-stress. Uh, a nice glass of white wine or a nice walk. Ah, lovely. Hot tub, reading, music, sundowning. What? Sundowning. Vodka, gin, wine, a lot of booze there. Uh. Did you notice? Swans, the pub and the PlayStation. Let's talk more about this to Neil Shah. He's the, get this, he's the chief de-stressing officer. Chief de-stressing officer, that's his job. I love this man already. Love him. At the Stress Management Society. He's also the author of 10 Step Stress Solution. Let's get him on the show. Hello, Neil, sir. Good morning, Malcolm. How are you today? Lovely. I've never met a chief de-stressing officer before. <laughs> you sound great already. Fantastic. Thank you. What do you think about our listeners there? Their simple ways of de-stressing. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Everybody, you know, comes up to me and says, Neil, what's the answer? What's the, the magic cure to stress? Well, you know, we're all different and unique. And what works for me might not work for you. And it might be horrifying to someone else. So I think it's important that we find, number one, something that we enjoy, something that's going to make us feel happy. Uh, that, that is really a key for me. Yes. A lot of alcohol involved in our listeners' <laughs> answers there. Vodka and tonic, gin and tonic, a couple of glasses of wine. But then some other things like easy things, feeding the swans, watching the sun go down, taking a deep breath. Absolutely. Now, I'm just going to come back on the point on alcohol, because alcohol in and of itself isn't a great remedy no, for stress. No. However, the way that people use alcohol is a fantastic remedy to stress. For example, I go to the pub with my friends and we talk about football or the bar lady or what happened at work. That is what gives us the benefit. That is why we feel relaxed. Or some people say, well, I sit in my garden after a long day, particularly in the summer, and have a glass of wine. Again, it's the fact that you sat in the garden and relaxed is what gave you the benefit. You have just attached it to the glass of wine. You could equally do that with a glass of orange juice. Obviously, it doesn't have quite have the same appeal. But the point I'm getting at is that we have attached benefit to alcohol. It's not alcohol that actually gives you benefit when you're stressed. It's how you use them. What a good point. And of course, too much. Well, then you're going down a really bad route for de-stressing and everything else, basically. <laughs> No, no, of course, because then you're going to put your body into a, 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 an increased state of stress because you're going to be dehydrated, you're going to have a hangover and a headache, and that tends to make it all much, much worse. So rather than turning to something that's going to potentially leave you in a worse state than when you started, why not do something that makes you feel happy, uh, that, that helps you to release the stress, and 
then if you want to have a glass of wine or a cup of coffee or some chocolate, that's entirely up to you. Rather than turning to the stimulants yes. that, we, that we tend to turn to when we're stressed, that actually exaggerate the state. Running and going down the gym, both mentioned, a bit of exercise. Absolutely. Now, when you go into that fight or flight state of stress, your body is anticipating to have to run or, or, or fight whatever's causing that state. Um, you know, it's like the, the, the proverbial saber-toothed tiger. Well, however, most of us in modern society, when we get stressed, there is nothing to fight and nothing to run away from. It's not a saber-toothed tiger. It's, you know, a crash computer at work or a deadline being moved forward or a delayed train. And as much as you might want to smack someone in the face and run out of the office, it's probably not the most appropriate response. The quickest and easiest way to take yourself out of that state is give your body what it's anticipating with some physical activity. Um, and yes, if there is no other option, get yourself down to the gym. But I'm much more a fan of doing exercise in a more natural environment. So whether that's running or walking the dog or going for a stroll at lunchtime, riding a bike, swimming in a lake, you know, anything that gets you out in nature, gets you the fresh air, is going to be significantly more beneficial than, than, than being inside a gym, which is always going to have toxic recirculated air, it's going to be a loud, noisy place, that's not necessarily going to give you the headspace that's going to allow you to de-stress. And also greenery, you know, the... the, the <clears throat> Uh, the, one of the, the, the comments that was made was, was weeding. Yeah. Now, you know, just being around um, sort of plants can lower your heart rate and your blood pressure. You know, one of the things that we've done in our new offices, we've filled it with plants just to give that benefit. But, you know, something as simple as walking in the park, being around nature and being around plants can actually have a significant impact on your physiology. This time yesterday, I was speaking to Roger Coop. He's a naked cyclist. He says there is nothing better for de-stressing than feeling the sun on your bare behind while cycling in the raw and the reason I, I know I know he was great the reason I bring him up Neil is something that I think you've already mentioned and that is finding what works for you and if it's good to de-stress then go ahead absolutely now what you've got to bear in mind is when you are happy when you laugh or smile your body will produce hormones like serotonin, endorphins, uh, and they will literally change your physiology. When you get stressed, your body also produces hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, which have an impact on the way that your body's functioning. Now, you cannot be happy and laughing and stressed at the same time. It is not possible for your body to occupy those two physiological states. So if you can find something that's going to put a smile on your face and make you feel happy and maybe even cause a bit of a giggle, now, at the end of the day, I'm not so much uh, uh, someone that's gravitating towards naked cycling. I like cycling, but if I saw someone cycling naked down the street, that would reduce my stress because I would laugh so much I'd yeah. probably, you, you know, like throw up a little bit in my mouth or pee my pants a bit. What a great point. What a great fact. You cannot possibly de be stressed while you're laughing or smiling. It's lovely. Uh, look, Dr. Neil, I'm going to... Oh, Dr. Neil, I've just called you. In fact, yeah, no, let's do that. You are now going to be called on the show forevermore, Dr. De-Stress. Fantastic. Is that all right with you? That's absolutely great. And we must speak again, Neil. Thank you for your time and expertise. We've got some... Uh, for, for all of your wonderful readers, we put a free book together, which they can download on our website. They just need to go to www.stress.org.uk um, and they can get hold of that, which will give them lots of wonderful tips on how to de-stress. Brilliant stuff. Thank you, Neil. You're yeah, well, most welcome. Have a wonderful day. Oh, I will. It's impossible to smile and to be stressed at the same time. The body can't do it. What a great thought for the day. Jim in Broadwas has called us. Try croquet, Malk, as a de-stress mechanism. Come and join the Broadwas Croquet Club. Ooh. Do you know I think I'd be very good at croquet? It's just my sort of game. Gentle. Relaxed. Involves a mallet. Perfect.